So this is James with uh, Love My Pups. I think you can see it up there. www.lovemypups.com and my breeder supply. So I do lots of videos. Today I want to do an unabashed recommendation of why I'm your stud person for French Bulldogs. So I've done lots of videos about how to choose stud dogs, but I want to talk about specifically what I do and why I think this is important and relevant to uh, getting your dog pregnant. So there's lots of places for you to go find a stud for your girl. I'm obviously not the only game in town. Um, so you know you have to make a decision who you're going to use and so what are the parameters that should influence your decision so i'm going to tell you about what i do and why i think it's probably a lot different than the majority of people you see out there um, so the first one is of course you've got to choose the dog that's going to suit your girl so that's something that you should get help from the stud breeder i mean let's talk about the size of your girl. Let's talk about the age of your girl. Let's talk about the colors that your uh, puppies that your girl can produce. Let's talk about um, the conformation of your girl. Is she a bit long? Does she need to have a dog that's a bit smaller? So the answer here is I have 20, two zero, 20 stud dogs to choose from, a lot. And that has happened because over the years I've been very successful at this. And so people have bred to my dogs, then come back and want to use an unrelated male on a puppy they kept from that litter. And because of that, I've kept on increasing my stud lineup. And as I say, I've got 20 of them. So I've got colors that vary from standard colors, like creams and, and fawns and reds, to blues and chocolates and lilacs, some with tan points, um, merles. I have all of those colors. So I can, I absolutely help every single of my customers to make the choice for the right dog based on what their goals are. So some people are breeding for the show ring, some people are breeding because they want to give dogs to people in the family, some people are breeding because they want to keep dogs so they can have more puppies that they can maybe have puppies from. But these are all influence potentially which stud dog might make sense for you because there's, there's not just the colors, but there's things like the financial cost of this whole thing. So you know, all of this is relevant to the conversation. So. Um, I think you'll find that most people probably will not have much of a conversation about this, but you want to have somebody on board who does understand things like coat color genetics. I know the coat color genetics of my dogs, and I'll have a pretty good idea about the coat color genetics of your dog based on the parents that she has, her color, puppies that she's thrown in the past. And those things can help us predict what you're going to get. Because, you know, in most cases, you don't want a litter of all brindle dogs. And if you don't ask the right questions, and if the person at the other end doesn't know how to answer those questions, you can get some colors that really are not what you want. All right, so, so predicting what kind of puppies we're gonna have, I think is very relevant to this whole process. And so somebody's gotta have some experience, and certainly if you don't have the experience, then you've gotta make sure that your, your person that you're relying on does have the experience to help you with this. All right, so you've picked a dog, you, 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 we know we, we're going to go ahead and do, a, um, in my case, if you're using me, we're probably going to ship it. I doubt that you're coming to me. Some people do come as far away as, I mean, Oklahoma, as far away as Louisiana, uh, Nebraska, Kansas, Texas, to come breed a dog on site. And that's absolutely, we can do that. We can even do in-house progesterone testing. But for most of my customers, I'm shipping it out. So, so the next thing is we've got to decide when is the right time to ship semen to you because it's going to take you know 15 24 hours to get to you we're going to collect it as late as we can in the afternoon it'll be there the following morning in most cases so we've got to time this right because picking the right dog that's one thing getting the product to you in a timely manner is obviously paramount to getting this done successfully so we've got to know how to time the ai and this is something that the stud owner should be able to help you with so what I do is I want you to be breeding your dog, uh, if you're doing a regular artificial vaginal AI, to be doing, be, uh, your dog needs to be bred on a 15, a level of 15 on progesterone level. The day beforehand it'll be on eight, the day before that it'll be a five. So we're trying to get to that eight point and ship the next, ship for the next day's insemination. If you're doing a vaginal, excuse me, a surgical or a transcervical AI, you could be late by another half a day to a day an AI more like on a 20 or a 24. Um, but the point here is, is that, that 
not only do we have to decide on the right dog, but we've got to decide when to ship it. Because if we ship it wrong, guess what? We're not going to get a good litter or no litter at all. So the person that you're talking to, in this case, hopefully me, you know, I'm going to know a hell of a lot and probably more than most vets do about the behavior of the dog, the outward signs that give us an idea, the color of her discharge, the results of progesterone tests, all of these things blend together to give us a clear picture about when we need to do the insemination. So progesterone tests. So a lot of you are going to do progesterone tests at your local vet. Um, we've got to make sure that the vet can get results in a timely manner. Most vets don't get results till the next day. We've got to make sure that we know what time that's going to be because we don't want to be in a situation where we think we need to ship but we don't have the results yet. So that's something else that I'm going to get involved in. Then the next thing is, is that you can do your own in-house test using the uh, um, target test kits. So you have to draw some blood and I've got videos and tons of information on that particular test. You can buy a test kit for 140 bucks for 12 tests delivered. Um, so you're going to pay about $12 a test, a lot less expensive than going to a vet. But the important thing is you can get results literally within 15 minutes of taking blood, you've got results. So um, I can get, I will get involved in this whole progesterone timing the AI process. And you'll find that I'm very helpful on this. So I know a lot about this. All right. So the next thing is physically collecting from the dog. Well, if, if you're talking to somebody who doesn't collect from their dog very often, then there is lots of technique to this that if you haven't put your foot in the muck before, then I promise you, you'll make mistakes. I've learned those mistakes over the last decade. I know, or I mean, I say I know everything. I mean, I'm supposed to know everything. Doesn't mean that I don't learn things as time goes on, but I'm extremely careful to make sure that I have a process that I go through to make sure that number one, I'm collecting from the right dog. Number two, that we have a good collection, I evaluate it. And number three, that this thing is correctly prepped, which means that it has to be added to extender and it needs to be warmed up before we do that process. Um, and I, by the way, I do all this in house. So most people, they go off to the vet well, that gets to be a problem in itself because you call them up at two o'clock in the afternoon and you say, hey, my dog's ready to go. Well, they've got to get the dog to the vet. They've got to have an appointment with the vet. The vet's got to do the process of collecting from the dog. How many of these does the vet do? My local vet hardly ever does it. I do anywhere from a couple to 10 every day. So I have a huge amount of experience with this. And I mean, I think this is it, fundamental to be able to do this right. All right. So then the next thing is, how do you physically ship it? Well, for me, you're going to get a box that looks like this is going to show up. It's going to show up the next day. You're going to ship it out FedEx overnight. And inside that box, you're going to find a canister. And in that canister, and you can see it's flashing away there. And there'll be some, by the way, there's some gel packs that go in here as well. These will be frozen. There's some gel packs that keep the whole thing cold. In fact, they're designed to keep the whole thing too cold. Because there's a, this is a patented product by me, by the way, Shipmate. This is the thing that has really opened up my ability to successfully ship semen to anywhere basically in the whole world. And uh, the majority of my shipments are within the continental US. And those shipments arrive, typically I collect at three in the afternoon and they arrive by 10.30 to noon the next day. Um, I have now had something in the order of 2,600 consecutive shipments using this product, my dogs, without a single failure in semen, not one failure. So when I was using the passive systems that everybody else are typically using, my failure weight was something bordering on 30%. It was awful, terrible. Now it's zero, my failure rate is zero. Absolutely don't have failures. So what happens? Okay, this arrives, it's all nice and cold. You open it up, um, inside it there's gonna be um, a sample. Let's just get this stuff out of here. Here's the sample. So you're going to get a sample like this in a well pack and you'll get a AI rod and I don't have that with me. Russ, can you get me an AI rod from over there, please? So Russ is going to get us an AI rod so we can see what's going on. There's one up there on the bench. Keep going forward a little bit and you'll see it. There's a whole kit down there, down on the, on the bench, on the bench. Go forward a bit. Um, all right. So this is what's going to arrive is, is you're going to have the semen sample. There's going to be a syringe, there's going to be a glove, thank you very much Russ, and there's going to be an AI rod. And that goes on to the syringe, it's a 5 mil syringe, and this little world pack, 
This is how easy it is. I just talked to somebody this morning who did theirs for the first time successfully. So they're going to have some pretty lilac fringes here in another 60 days. All right, so you open this thing up. You stick this down aside. You suck up a sample like that. If you've got some left, which I've got a bit more here than we need, it goes back into here and gets stuck back in the fridge. We can do it again later on the day or even the next day. So there we go. You're ready to go. You basically stick that. You know, I've got a video on showing you how to do the AI process. It's really straightforward. Uh, you're going to stick that um, in your dog. You're going to press the plunger and you've got the whole thing done. You can do this yourself. So you can take control of this whole process. Why would you want to do that? Well, the first thing is, is that you're not at the mercy of a vet. The second thing is that a vet typically takes about five minutes to do an AI. I recommend that you keep your dog elevated for 30 minutes. No vet's going to wait that long. They've got too many people in the waiting room. Um, and you can do all this in the comfort of your own home, and there's no additional expense for the AI. An AI can cost you hundreds of dollars, and this is going to cost you no additional. I include the kit. When I ship the sample, if you say you're going to do your own AI, you get the kit. It's just part of the package. All right. So this little product here will keep semen um, in a good shape for days. So I've had situations where we've had weather problems, gone to Hawaii, uh, go to Canada, Mexico, places where it's gone through customs, and the thing's got delayed for a day, still gonna get semen that arrives in good shape. So nobody else has a product like this. Everybody else is using passive systems. They suck. What we're talking about this, by the way, things like the kind of extender that I use is fundamental to being successful. So we mix the semen with some warmed up extender, the extender I use is from Motha Global. It's expensive stuff. It's $40 for a little bottle of it, but it is great stuff. And there's lots of extenders out there. I've done testing on just about every extender I can get my hands on. I can tell you that the majority of them suck. So the ones that are Kenny extenders that are based on milk, yolk based extenders, these products don't work anywhere near as well as uh, the Android Pro Chill Guard product I get from Motha Global. All right. So another thing, you know, what kind of extender are you using? Ask, you, ask the, the stud provider or the vet what kind of extender they're using and uh, see if they know what they're talking about. Because if they don't, they're probably using a cheap one and they're not very good. How are we gonna ship it to you? So we wanna make sure that not only have we got the right dog, that we've collected, that the sample looks good, that we've packed it up properly in a suitable container, but we can get it to you the next day. So someone, and that's the stud owner, has gotta check to make sure that the delivery system is going to be available to you. If you're in a rural area, it can be a problem. Rural areas, sometimes those things don't show up until later on in the day, maybe five o'clock. And if you've got a vet appointment and it arrives at five o'clock and the vet's closed, what are you going to do? Well, maybe you do the AI yourself. Maybe we ship to a different place where you can drive 20 minutes and get it sooner. But these are all things that I check on every shipment. I make sure that we know when this is gonna arrive. I send you a copy of a shipping label, and on that, there is a time that it's supposed to arrive by. And how are they gonna ship it? FedEx, fantastic. I wouldn't use anybody else ever. UPS, just nowhere near as good as FedEx. Their, their reliability is about 85%. FedEx is like 99.9% .9 successful. Then there's other ways that you can ship. For instance, you can ship by Greyhound. You, you, there are reasons that you might use Greyhound, they run 365 days a year, but you need to know about Greyhound, you need to know about bus changes, because if you don't get Greyhound right, and there's lots of mistakes that can be made, it won't get there at all. If you have to ship out on a Saturday, then I can use the post office. Again, we've got to make sure where we're going to, are we going to pick up at the post office, are we going to have it shipped to you at your house? These all affect when it's going to arrive, and again, I know how to do this stuff and the stud owner absolutely needs to get this right because if you don't, there can be the best laid plans end up in semen not arriving or arriving late. All right. Um, multiple shipments. What happens if you want to do more than one AI? And I recommend, by the way, that, it, that you do two AIs. Do two AIs two days apart. Unless you can do a surgical or a transurgical. If you're doing a regular vaginal, I would do it two days apart. It gives you a much broader coverage area. So what I like to do is I like to breed um, a slightly early, maybe half a day to a day early, then wait a day, ship again, and then breed on the other side of the optimum time. And that way you've got it covered. The window of opportunity is plus or minus one day from, from the right day to AI. And so this gives us a window that's more like 
three days on both sides of it, so we've got a much better chance of hitting, hitting it correctly and getting a nice size lift. Um, I give a guarantee. All of my shipments, all of my breedings come with a guarantee. And basically, guarantee is really straightforward. It says, is you're getting puppies. And if you're not getting puppies, then um, if it's ever my fault, I always take care of the situation. And, and when can it be my fault? Well, it rarely happens. But if it ever does happen, then you know I always take care of the situation. So I'm all about my customers. I'm all about keeping people happy. I'm all about referrals. I'm all about doing the right thing. But um, what's the guarantee? So the guarantee goes like this with my, with my shipments. Um, just pay me half the stud fee when we get started and, the, and $150 for every shipping that I send out. You can have multiple shipments. Additional shipments are just 150 bucks. You don't pay a second stud fee. So you pay the very first time half the stud fee. Then the balance of the stud fee, I collect that when you've had two or more live puppies, so you've had a successful litter. And you can do that when you're ready to sign off on the AKC registration. So that can be when the puppies are five, six, seven weeks old. And you can then fund the second part of this on deposits that you get for the puppies if you're going to sell them. Okay, so you've had a successful litter and you come back to do this again. The next time you use me, you only pay the shipping fees. I only collect the whole stud fee, again, after you've had a successful litter. So the idea behind this is, is that I want to, you to build confidence in me. I want you to be the, the, your go-to person. Um, and I'm going to get basically give you a guarantee that you're going to be successful. Otherwise, I don't get paid. Um, let's say that you've, you're, you've done your first shipment, you don't get a litter of puppies. So 85% of the time, we end up with successful litter. But it does mean that 15% of the time, one in seven times, you don't get puppies. And there could be a lot of reasons why that might happen. But either way, you didn't get puppies, what happens? Well, the answer is the half a stud fee that you paid me goes forward as a credit to be used against any future breeding of any dog you have against any stud dog that I have. So we're not here just to take your stud fee and then never talk to you again. We are here to take a stud fee and then deliver on what our promise is, is there's a nice litter of puppies. And you don't just get me just to help you with the initial part of picking a stud out. You get me through the entire pregnancy all the way up to puppies leaving to their adopted homes. So I've got a lot of experience on this. You know, if there's some issues that come up during the pregnancy, I'll have the right answers. Uh, I'll pick the phone up and talk to you even at three o'clock you know, on a Sunday morning, um, if you've got, a, I mean, obviously, I <laughs> don't really necessarily want phone calls at three o'clock on Sunday morning, but if you've got a problem and you need to talk to somebody, I'm your person. I will pick a phone up and I will talk to you and I will always do that. So if you text me, I'll respond to you really quickly. Phone calls almost always will be picked up immediately. Um, so I'm not just about this first part, getting a stud fee. I am about the whole process. Time in the C-section. So I run into this not just for my customers, but for a lot of other people who have having Frenchies who call me up. They want to know how to time a C-section. There's some huge mistakes that happen on a regular basis, um, and, and they're part of those things because the vet doesn't really, it's not too familiar with the whole process, or the vet's not gonna be around. What do you do if the puppies are gonna come on a day that the vet's not gonna be there? The answer is you've gotta have a plan B, and somebody, me, needs to help you with deciding when's the right time to take these puppies. You take puppies early on a C-section, they won't live. You take puppies too late, they're already happening at your house, and you can lose puppies or even your dame over this. So getting the C-section right, staying on top of it, is paramount to be having a successful well, and also what you're gonna pay for that process. If you have to go to an emergency room for after hours C-section, then you're gonna pay maybe two or three times what you would normally pay in your area, plus you're getting probably the least experienced vet there is around. Nobody wants to do the graveyard shift, and if you're an experienced vet, you're not doing the graveyard shift. The new guy's doing the graveyard shift at three o'clock in the morning. So we don't want that to happen. We want to plan this thing properly. We want to have the, the, the C-section during regular business hours, and if we know what we're talking about, and we look at the right signs, and we do the right things, we can make that happen. Um, and I'm all about helping people. I mean, obviously there's a financial aspect to this, and none of this is inexpensive. There's, there's significant costs to getting a successful litter of puppies, from the, the pre-vet bills, to my stud fees, to C-sections, to looking after puppies, to advertising. It's not an inexpensive thing. So I'll, I absolutely want to make this successful for you. And, and if I do that, then guess what? Um, you say nice things about me, and I have lots of uh, referrals to other people, and you come back and do it again, and that's a win-win situation for everybody. So 
Um, I, I really, this video, I'm not used to really touting my own horn, but this video really is about that. And I mean, give you an example. We don't just, we haven't just patented uh, uh, products to ship semen. We're not just about this. We're entrenched in this whole thing. For instance, we, we make and, and sell portable incubators, and we sell these all over the United States and in Europe. Uh, we sell uh, whelping systems. We have a unique whelping system uh, that's un different than anybody else's and is really effective. So we're not just about stud service, we're about Frenchies. We know Frenchies and we want to help you. So uh, if I can help you in any way, then you can contact us at www.lovemypups.com, www.love. M Y P U P S dot com. I think it's up there. I'm going to go up there and look at that for a second. www.lovemypuff.com. You can call me. My phone number, my cell number is 580 799 2873. So you're welcome to call me on that too. So again, and if, you, if you're, are you back on me there, Russ? And so it, it, here's the deal I'm not here just to you to use one of my studs. If you've got problems, if you've got issues, if you want help, and you're not using one of my stud dogs, you're still absolutely fine to call me. So, and I get lots of phone calls like that, where I help people, give them useful information. If you go to our website, you'll see there's lots of videos and information on this whole process, not just the stud part of it, but the whole thing. So again, use us as a resource. We'd love that you use one of our dogs, but the, the most important thing is be successful with your Frenchies, look after your girls, be nice to them, and enjoy life. And thanks for watching, bye-bye.